Angelina, and you are watching the Jam interview. So what's your story? Well, um, I've been doing art all my life that I can remember. And in high school, I remember somebody coming into school to talk to us about, you know, um, colleges. And he w came from Columbus College of Art and Design. And he started talking about all sorts of art. And he was talking about glass blowing. And I had no idea what that was at the time. And I was like, I want to know what this is. And so he like went on about it. And I was like very intrigued by it because I used to make a lot of art with broken glass and broken mirrors and such like that. So he went on in depth about it. So I got really intrigued by it. And I said, okay, well, maybe I want to pursue art, you know, for the rest of my life. So I actually ended up going to CCAD and went, got into glass blowing my sophomore year. And I actually went to college for drawing and painting, but I fell in love with glass blowing and ceramics and jewelry. So <laughs> I kind of do it all. I, uh, you know, draw, paint, print, make all everything really fine arts. I, I can sculpt as well, like with wood and metal and such, but those things I don't do as much. Um, I'm also an outdoor educator. I uh, been doing outdoor things, teaching, classes, team building um, since I was 16 for so like around 11 years and it just progressed from there. So I teach art and outdoor education to anyone and kind of combine them. Um, I try to focus on bringing a connection back um, that people lose to nature. So like nature, human connection in my art. And some people get that through my art and some people are like, this is weird, you know, because I have an obsession with tree fungus. So a lot of my stuff has like tree fungus or inspiration from it. So I would say that's basically my story. You know, I'm just an artist who loves the outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> I got, where did the uh, obsession of tree fungus come from? <sighs> that's a good question. I don't think I actually know specifically. Um, just every time I would go hiking, I would always, always, always um, notice fungus or mushrooms around. And I just started, you know, getting, you know, uh, I just loved the way that it looked, especially the ones that um, look like shelves. So like turkey tail fungus, those are my favorite because they come in w lots of different colors. And the idea that the mushroom is like growing from something that's decaying. I also really love that and it's repetition. So it's just like, is overpowering, but in a delicate kind of way. So I just like was super intrigued by that. And it's not something that most people find beauty in. So I try to show people. So when I would go hiking with children or teenagers or whoever, I always point it out. And I'm like, hey, look at that. And they're like, why are you pointing that out? But then afterwards, they like kind of get addicted to it. And they're like, look, look, like they get excited. And then I can't tell you enough times where people bring mushroom things to me instead of like flowers <laughs> or they'll send me a picture like I'll get random pictures from people that I don't talk to, or I haven't talked to in a long time and it will be of mushrooms and they'll be like thought of you so it's like something you know interesting and weird in a way and I just love the shapes and I love organic shapes so with my glass I would make glass wall fungus um which sounds funny, but it's like little glass pieces that you just stick into the wall and it looks like it's growing on the wall, as well as um, ceramic pieces like that. And then blown glass pieces, I would like make, I would make a mold myself with um, firewood, like it's soaked firewood, and then I would put the glass in there and, and blow on the pipe to make it um, take the shape of the wood and then I would just stick random fungus things. I guess that kind of went astray from where the obsession came from. I think just because I'm in love with nature. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that was a, a pretty intricate <laughs> description and it was actually the way that you described fungus <laughs> was very poetic. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah, I mean, I just like I think it's beautiful, and I don't know, the colors, even when they are dying themselves, I think the colors are so striking, and like, I don't know, 
next time you take a hike, anybody, you know, just go and notice there's like just tree fungus growing up a tree, you know, the tree is rotting, but that's still growing and it's like, there's s over 60,000 species of mushrooms and you know, I want to learn that all and I tried, but you know, there's a lot. <laughs> so I just focus on the ones that I see frequently, which those are ones that I focus on a lot. <laughs> that's awesome. You're self-taught in terms of learning those different species? Um, yeah, for the most part. Like, even though I'm an outdoor educator, we d don't really talk about specific fungus. We, like, talk about um, growth and decay in the forest and, um, like, it's called FBI, fungi, bacteria. Well, now I've lost the eye. <laughs> but anyway, it just talks about how, like, it, it helps break down the the growth of the forest so that new growth comes in. So like we teach like that, but um, anything specific, yeah, I just kind of researched on my own and in college I had to, um, in your senior year if you're a fine artist, you have to have a thesis um, show which you have like a concentration. So my concentration was connection, you know, human connection to nature like I said before and so I had to research a lot about the fungus and you know why am I doing it and what's the point of you know uh, researching it and making the art like I have <laughs> I have ceramic f or porcelain feet that I made that have fungus growing on it and people think you know that's weird or they'll say is that supposed to be like foot fungus <laughs> I'm like well I guess you can take it that way right. but it's really more like you know s walking in nature barefoot and uh, having that connection that human connection with nature instead of just being like, oh, I went outside. Does that make sense? It's like more of, I guess, deep rooted and getting in tune with natural world instead of, you know, we're always on the go 24 seven, always everything is instant gratification and everyone's on tech. Well, most people are on technology, you know, so I try to s make my art show people to step outside of that and go and explore nature in a different way, like well, looking at fungus, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> and that's really, yeah, that's a, uh, I can see, most definitely see the connection and um, understanding how, like, as humans, we should be more connected to nature because we do lose that connection at most times from our day-to-day -day life and experiences. Yeah, and you know, not, I know like, there's like people you know that might not necessarily feel comfortable going out in the woods and when I when I talk to people about that I say well just go you know to any like park you know even just walking on a paved trail you you can see a lot of different things and you know there's a lot of children running around and stuff but try to like I don't know I guess it's a form of meditation in a sense where you're like listening and using all your senses to see something different you know like I try to go I try to have people come with me that are not comfortable in nature to go a little bit deeper not necessarily so deep that you know it's like wow I'm totally in the wilderness no it's like trying to get away where you can barely hear the traffic or anything like that but you still can hear it so they're feeling not as overwhelmed but like when I teach any of my outdoor classes, especially class um, where we talk about like pond growth and stuff, we tell the kids, well, I tell the kids to be quiet for like two minutes and just use all their senses to hear and see different things. And you know, they come up with crazy things and you're like, I didn't even know that, notice that, you know, they notice a certain bird or they notice something in the sky and it's just like trying to, I guess, slow down. Yeah. Because we're always, like I said, really fast-paced. <laughs> <laughs> when was the the first time you made that connection between your art and nature? Hmm. Probably not until college, like uh, freshman year of college. In I think in any art school, probably. Uh, you basically learn all the basics, like you have a certain class and everyone basically takes the same classes, you know, uh, drawing, painting, 3D, 2D, all those things. So like during that time, 
there wasn't too much exploration that you can do on your own art necessarily. Like there was assignments and you kind of had to st stick to it in a, in a sense, but you could bring your little spunk to it. And I think that I kind of started in freshman year, but because I was so overwhelmed with everything else that I just didn't think I was a good enough artist. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to do whatever the teacher's telling me. Right. But I think during sophomore year of college, I... I got into glass blowing because in freshman year you can't really get into a glass blowing ca class. So my sophomore year, I got into a glass blowing class, and I think that my professor at that point, who ended up being my mentor, he kind of like pushed me into trying to have a focus like in my art, and I was getting more in tune with nature the summer before that, and so I think that. At that point, I was like, okay, well, where am I going to, what am I going to do? How can I make something that I really enjoy outside here? So, yeah, I think I started then during sophomore year because I can remember I wanted to make glass, like, fungus pieces and, like, stick them on, like, old chargers or old tires and stuff like that. And he was like, okay, I understand where you're coming from, but then at what point that that does that just look like junk? You know, you have to figure out a way to make it cohesive, you know, and I was just kind of sticking it on there to make it be like, oh, here, this is my idea. But he was trying to make it so I can explore it more and make it more art instead of just something that was stuck together uh, just because I wanted to do <laughs> it. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think uh, I just thought about, like, how connecting that to – like that art and nature is like nature can most definitely grow over things or mm -hmm. overpower things that humans have made. Yeah. Um, and like, you know, just seeing like different kinds of ruins from, you know, ancient, ancient periods and yeah. different time periods is most definitely you see nature really just <laughs> over time overgrowing. Right. Um, the things that we've made and, and it, it, it most definitely solidifies that nature is going to prevail <laughs> with us or without us. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like I, every t there's a quote in, I think the first Jurassic park that says like, um, life will find a way. And it was talking about a piece of, you know, when you're walking down the street and you see like blades of grass or something growing in between the cement, you know, it's right. just, it's gonna, like you're saying, it's going to take over. And, uh, one of my favorite quotes, I can't remember it verbatim or who said it, but it was something along the lines of, um, oh, man, in 50 years, um, if humans, like, take over, in 50 years, the world will be over. If humans didn't exist or dwindle out, in 50 years, the world will, like, flourish because, you know, nature is going to take its course back from humanity I guess right, and, yeah. and grow and you know insects and all that will you know have their homes again I mean I'm not saying like <laughs> I, okay I guess <laughs> I'm not trying to bash humanity completely right. I'm just saying like you know we overtook you know a lot of the land so but you're like you're saying in ancient ruins and all that you see growth everywhere and that's kind of the connection too you know because I was making I was man making something that is trying to mimic something in nature that does take over, but eventually that's going to take over my art. You know, right. it's going to grow on my art. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, it comes full circle. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for, you know, taking the time to interview. Yeah, of course. I uh, appreciate it. Um, you have any, I guess, anywhere that people can find your artwork? Um, yeah, uh, right now you can find a lot of my artwork on, I guess predominantly all my artwork you can find on Instagram, um, and my, ta my username, tag name <laughs> is a song for a melody. Um, I also have an Etsy page that goes with that. Not all my art is on there currently, but it's just a work in progress and there's Facebook and I'm work I'm reworking my website, but I'm that won't be for a little while. <laughs> so I guess Instagram is the best way to find it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Do, you, do you have, like, anybody you want to give a shout-out to? 
we'll give out a shout out to you for interviewing, <laughs> I guess. Um, and just anybody who's ever supported my work, you know, and supported me into continuing my art even when I wanted to give up, you know. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for watching. Keep jamming. <laughs>